Hey everyone, uh, today I'll be going over leak code problem 797, all passed from source to target. This is a really good one because it kind of uh, gives you a entry into DFS slash backtracking. So I actually really like this one and um, I actually use this one to teach backtracking. So this one's pretty cool. So basically we're given a directed acyclic graph or a DAG of N nodes. Uh, 0 to n minus 1, find all possible paths from source to uh, n minus 1. So basically our n node is always going to be the amount of nodes minus 1. So basically this graph you can see it has 4. So we want to find all paths from 0 to 3, which is you know 4 minus 1. And likewise with this one you can also see this. Now another key thing to note is it's acyclic, which means it has no cycles at all. So we don't have to keep track of like some visited set or something. Uh, we can just go through it as normal uh, because there will be no cycle. So we'll always end up at the end is what I'm trying to say. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we're going to be doing this recursively. Uh, and we're going to actually, since this is the return type, uh, let's just get our result ready. Okay, so we have that and we're going to actually have some helper method, which I'm going to call DFS for now. We're going to call this this is my normal format we have the result we use dfs to fill it up and then we're going to return the result so just the normal format we're going to call dfs now what is this dfs needing what is it what are we doing here so we're going to actually uh, make it down here and it doesn't need to return anything because we're filling up res so we're going to call it void and we're going to call it dfs and it's going to need a few uh parameters here so the first thing we want is we want this result because we have to fill it up, right? The next thing we need is we need to know the current path because we need all paths. So we're going to actually uh, call this in list of integer and it's going to be our path, our current path. And then we also need to know the graph, right? Uh, because we need to know what we're traversing. So we also need that. And then the last thing we need is we need to know which cell or which node we're currently on. So I'm going to call this cur for current. And it's going to be like that. And sorry for writing the method definition this way, but it would have just been really long. So, so basically, we have these things here. So now that we have these, we need to know what where we need to start. So result, we can just pass that. A path is just going to be an empty array list because the path should be empty. We haven't seen anything yet. And then the graph is simply going to be graph. And we always want to start at the first node. So we're going to put zero for curve. Now, a few things here. Uh, we're going to do this in a backtracking style way. So what we want to do is the moment we see any node, that means we visited it, which means we should add the current node to the path always that's the first thing we should do uh, because we visited it the next thing we want to know is did we reach the end so we want to go from 0 to n minus 1 so we just check for that so if cur is equal to graph dot length minus 1 which would mean we reached the end uh, if we reach the end that means it's a valid path so we want to add the path to the result. So we're going to do that. Now, we actually want to add a copy of the path, which is why I'm putting it in an array list constructor. It's because when we're recursing through different paths, we might be modifying this path. And we don't want to append the path and modify it in some other recursive branch. So we actually make a copy of it or a clone, a shallow clone of it. Uh, otherwise, that means we have to keep searching. So if we keep searching, all we have to do is just go through all the neighbors of this node. So basically, if we look at the if we look at the graph here, the way it's represented, basically at each node, its neighbors are the array at that index. So basically, we can just simply go for int neighbor to make it clear for each neighbor in graphs current because that will give us the neighbors like if we're at current zero its neighbors are one and two so that's exactly what we want so what are we going to do we're going to keep searching so we're going to call dfs 
uh, we can continue to pass res, we can continue to pass path. Now, we don't have to add anything to path because we basically did that. We were just tracking the visited at the very beginning. And then graph, we don't have to change it. And then cur is the one thing we have to change. It now becomes neighbor because that's what we're visiting next. And then when we visit that one, it'll come back up to here. It'll add that to the path and you can kind of see what's happening. Uh, we're just going to keep visiting each one. So now the thing is, is as all backtracking solutions, uh, after we do all this, that means we're done searching this path. So if we're done searching this path, we actually have to remove. And we have to remove whatever's at the end of it. Now this is an O1 operation. You might think removing from an array, uh, that's ON, this is not a good solution. But if you're removing from the end of it, it's just a pop, so it's ON. So basically what's going on here is we track the visited, we check if we're at the end, we return a copy of it or push a copy of it, if not, we go through all neighbors of this current node, we search that path, and then when we're done with all of this logic, that means we're done searching this path so we can actually remove it. So this is the backtracking boilerplate. You add, you search the space. When you're done searching the space, you remove that from the uh, path. So let's go ahead and run this. This actually should be good right here. And we'll see if we get accepted. Let's just go ahead and submit this right away. And yeah, you'll see 95% runtime and memory usage is 96.83%. So talking about time and space complexity, it's actually very strange if we think about it, but really we are visiting every single node in this graph and every single path from each node in this graph, every single connection. So Realistically, if we talk about, well, let's talk about the easy one, which is space first. So the space really is O of one, and I'm gonna tell you why. And actually, well, if you wanna talk about like the recursive call stack, I'm talking about like pure space. Uh, recursive call stack might actually add some to the space. But if we talk about pure space, uh, we don't really do use anything besides the output array list. So really there is no space because you don't really count the output list as space but if you want to count the recursive call stack like i get it like really this would be like the o of like longest path or like uh or we could call this like uh o of max depth and max depth meaning like uh, longest path from source to target because that would be the longest recursive call stack but i mean you know how that is. I mean, you could realistically call this O of N, O of 1. It's just a number of things. When you get into recursion, it's really weird. Uh, talking about time, uh, so basically, we want to search all paths. So it gets very hairy. And to be completely honest, I'm actually not sure the time, how to calculate the time complexity for a solution like this. I'm pretty sure it's on the order of like O of like max depth times nodes like that's the worst case like you know what i'm saying so like longest path times the number of nodes but you know how that is but basically just i'm gonna leave that blank and leave that up for interpretation i just wanted to go through the solution and think out loud here so yeah i hope this made sense and i hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching